Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we will be taking a look at the high quality camera module from Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. So before we begin, I do want to give a huge shout out to Micro Center. They're the one that actually sent me over the camera module and the two lenses that I could play around with so I could do this review for you guys. And if you guys want to get yours, you could just check down in the description below and I'll have links to everything that we're talking about in this video. To get started, you're going to notice that this is a very large PCB board compared to the predecessor. It's also got a larger sensor. So if you see the comparison between the two, the previous one was 4.8 millimeter diagonal size, while this one is a standard 7.9 millimeter sensor size. So why I say it's standard, it's because you're going to see a lot of manufacturers with this and the best way to compare this to is a GoPro. The GoPro has a very similar sensor with 12 megapixels and a 7.9 millimeter diagonal sensor size. So you're also going to notice that you got this black housing that actually allows you to fit C and CS lenses on this guy. Then you also have a quarter inch mount on the bottom so you can actually attach it to tripods. What's really, really cool about this is not only is it 12 megapixels with this new sensor, it's the mount that's important because this CS mount allows you to use not only these two lenses, but a huge variety of other types of lenses. And if you want to go even deeper into that, you can actually get an adapter from a CS to EF mount lenses, which I use on my Canon. So basically all these lenses you see over here, all I have to do is get an adapter and I could actually use it right off the Raspberry Pi camera module, which is insane. That means I could use a huge variety of lenses. Now the sensor itself is 12 megapixels, which means it's this resolution that I'll put right here for image quality. And as far as video goes, you could do 1080 at 30 frames per second, 720 up to 60 frames per second, and 480 up to 90 frames per second. So you can actually get a little bit of slow-mo on this guy. And with the increased sensor size, you're gonna be able to do a little bit better as far as light capture. So compared to the old guy, anytime where it gets a little dim, you just can't see anything, or you're gonna see a lot of artifacts in the screen because of the ISO is too high. This guy could actually capture a lot more light. If, like I said, it's comparable to a GoPro. So if you are familiar with using a GoPro at a 1080 resolution, the image quality and the video quality is very, very similar. So let's begin with setting this guy up. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is actually make sure you have everything updated. I had a little trouble with this because when I first started updating everything with sudo apt-get update and sudo distro update, I still couldn't detect the camera. I actually had to go in and do rpi-update, which updates the kernel by doing sudo rpi like this, update, It'll check if it's the latest kernel and that was the only missing part that was to get this camera working and I'm on the latest Raspberry Pi version. Now once you have this in, you could actually do a VC gen command get camera and it should say support it and detect it. That means it sees your camera. Now there's two softwares that you could actually run which is Raspberry Pi vid and Raspberry Pi still. Um, ra ras Pi still and Raspi vid those are the two programs that you could run to, to capture video or pictures now if you're going to be asking me about what the iso level is and what the frame rate is and what you can capture at it's all done in software so if we were to scroll up let me make this a lot larger and if i was to scroll up and show you guys if you needed to set up some say contrast level brightness iso um, exposure, auto white balancing, all this stuff is done inside this software. So you would have to know what you need um, as far as the ISO level or a frame rate that you need before you start capturing. So it's not done automatically. Everything is set manual. Just keep that in mind when you're using this. So I'm going to do a quick test. And if I was to do, say, Raspberry Pi still, I would do dash O to find out the output. And I'm going to save it onto the desktop. And then I would just call this picture test.jpg. And once you hit that enter, it's going to show you like an image, which is not focused right now. And it will take this capture, save it to your desktop. Right now it's so blurry. Like I said, I don't have it focused. But there you go. Your picture is on the desktop. It looks like it's a square. It doesn't look like it's 12 megapixel. That's because, again, everything is done inside the settings if you want. Um, let me see if I could actually set the camera. And what I would do is raspi vid, don't put an output, and just put T0. 
dash T zero. This is zero timeout and allows you to keep the lens open. And now I have a full screen, 10, 9, 1080, and I could actually just play around with the focus ring up on top just to start getting my focus. You can see like it's pulling in the focus now. And it's this is cap being captured through uh, my HDMI recorder. I'm gonna actually record this later on and then show you the actual footage so you can see it coming from the, the camera itself without having to go through an HDMI capture. But this is uh, setting the aperture right now. And this is setting the focus and you can see it's going in and out of focus. So with that all set, the next thing if I want to take another picture, I could just do Raspberry Pi still. I'm going to overwrite the test picture and here we go. And now if I go over to my desktop, I should see the picture that I just took, which is right there. Now I'm actually going to point this camera, uh, set this camera up. So I'm very close to what this would look like. And I'm going to show you side by side how the capture is. Okay. So right now I'm actually capturing with the telephoto lens and you can see it's like super zoomed into my face. Uh, compared to what I have right now on the camera, which is my Canon. And it's not bad. It's actually really, really good. And um, obviously I could play around the settings with the ISO levels and all the other things to make it like the way I need it to. And I don't even know if I have it super focused in because it's manual focus and I'm trying as best as I can to get it in frame. But let me switch over to the wide angle lens and that you will definitely see how everything should look. So let me switch it over. As far as swapping the lenses go, all you have to do is screw off the lens itself and the adapter. And be very careful with this part because these lenses are not light, so they will fall and get damaged. Now I'm just popping in without the optional adapter ring for the CCTV or the wide angle lens. Okay, so I'm gonna start the wide angle lens now. And it looks very similar to, let me see if I can get the focus right. Okay, so now I have the uh, six millimeter wide angle lens on and you could see it's very, very uh, comparable to what I have on my camera right now. And I, I gotta be honest, if I was to set the focus perfectly, I could probably get it if I had something else here and I, I, I play around with the focus. I could probably film a full YouTube video using the Raspberry Pi camera module because it's, it's really not bad, especially if you got some decent lighting in. This camera is actually really, really good. There you go. I played around with the focus one more time just now. And you could also notice that because this is a wide angle lens, you could see a little bit of like a warpage um, effect, which happens on a lot of wide angle lens like fish eyes and stuff like that. Uh, if you got a high quality wide angle lens, like say something for what I'm using on this camera, which is a 15 millimeter wide angle lens, uh, you won't see any of the warping, but lenses like this with, it's really not that bad. And I'm, I'm judging this right now. This is the first time I'm looking at it and the way I'm recording. Uh, the lighting is pretty good. Uh, there's no uh, pixelation, you could say, or you know when you have the ISO level way too high, you start seeing artifacts in the screen. I don't see any artifacts right here. Uh, the ISO level, I believe, defaults at 800, and I'm not exactly sure how high it could go up to. Uh, shutter speed, I have it as default, which should be 30 right now. Um, overall, I really like the image quality that it comes out of on this guy. It's it's really high quality. Like I'm not even kidding. Like I said, it, you could compare this to a GoPro because it's almost the same sensor as a GoPro. Um, it is using a Sony brand. Um, I forgot what the model number is, which I'll put right here. And yeah, overall, I really like this camera module. I'm also going to show some still pictures right now for you guys just to see how it looks like on the full 12 megapixels. And also using the telephoto lens at uh, 1.4 aperture just to show you guys how that would look like with the blurry background and everything. Okay, so overall, I really, really like this guy, especially the fact that I could do so much with it. I could, it's like I was saying before, I could probably film a full YouTube video using this, even the six millimeter lens, and I would have no problem editing and it would probably come out pretty good. This would also probably work out for my streaming setup that I'm 
putting together, which I'll leave a link down below for my other streaming stuff like Twitch. Overall, I am very excited about this product and I can't wait to see what other people do with this camera module, maybe turn the Raspberry Pi into a digital camera like I've done in 2017, which I'll leave a link here. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.